hello everyone. Um, thank you for joining us for the presentation. My name is Dan. I actually have Mia besides me. Yeah, I'm the special guest for this um, presentation and I can hopefully help with the questions and stuff. Yes, we are both uh, NetBSD developers. Mia has been helping me with uh, GNOME stuff and with the slides. And yeah, today uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about uh, porting GNOME to NetBSD, obviously. Uh, how did I start this port? How it uh, continued with uh, our uh, common effort? And what is the lessons I learned while uh, trying to port uh, GNOME? Uh, a few words about me. My name is Dan. I'm currently located in uh, Berlin. My background is mostly in web development. I've been writing APIs and backend servers, uh, but I always had a passion for operating system and uh, yeah, desktop software. My favorite operating system is, of course, uh, NetBSD, and actually my favorite uh, desktop environment is uh, GNOME. And that is the reason why the GNOME port appeared and uh, why I'm here to speak today. Also, as I said, uh, we have uh, Nia next to me, who helped me like uh, mentor and guide during my learning period of uh, package source NetBSD and uh, porting on. Uh, yeah, I will talk in, uh, today about uh, how uh, we started the GNOME port, uh, what is actually part of uh, our port, a bit about the GNOME architecture and how it fits into package source. And one of the most important things is the pain points, like what was the trouble we encountered along the way, and a few words about uh, how we can upstream our changes, what we can improve in the GNOME and the XORG projects and also in, uh, in PSD. Yeah. Um, yeah, how did all of this start? Um, yeah, I actually was uh, following NetBSD for a long time, but um, yeah, through, through coincidence, I left my full-time job before the pandemic. And well, it was, the pandemic was not planned and it was a bit uh, hard to find a job, but uh, it was easy to find a lot of free time to work on side projects. And while I was interested in uh, NetBSD initially, I encountered um, Mayas, who goes by Koipu, a bounty on the mailing lists. She, wanted, she posted a bounty to port uh, GDM, uh, the GNOME Display Manager. And I found it really, really interesting. So I wanted to try. But uh, I started all of this with very little C programming knowledge and very little OS development knowledge. So it has been quite a struggle for me personally. Yep. And yeah, and some, I've helped quite a bit with um, the C programming stuff, and um, since I do systems programming full time, and it's been it's been great working with Dan and, and um, reviewing his patches and stuff. So yeah. So uh, yeah, about the porting. Um, as I mentioned, I didn't really have an idea where I'm starting. But uh, thankfully, there has been an open BSD port, uh, I think, uh, done by Anthony. Uh, Anthony, I'm sorry if I don't remember the name correctly. We didn't really talk, but uh, basically, my start was by copying open BSD's patches and importing them to package source. Of course, there have been some differences, but uh, I don't think I could ever have managed to do it if. Uh, I didn't have the initial uh, jump start from uh, OpenBC guys. So thanks to them. Uh, and yeah, about the port, uh, as, um, I started with uh, the um, goal to port uh, GNOME's uh, desktop manager, but I uh, found out that it actually implies upgrading uh, and packaging a lot of stuff. So the priority soon changed to porting yeah, most of the GNOME desktop uh, ecosystem, which includes GNOME Shell, Motor, GNOME Session, the GNOME uh, basic libraries, 
we, we had to so spend on. we had to spend a lot of time like removing all of the old GNOME two stuff from package source and um, importing the the newer libraries and stuff. Um, and we just removed GNOME two before starting on GNOME three because we already had Mate and um, that just made the whole thing much easier. Basically, starting from scratch on GNOME three. Yeah. So well, I focused uh, mainly on the GNOME desktop, um, the, um, the apps were a lower priority, at least for me. So things like uh, Nautilus or other uh, GNOME apps, like some video player or music player, I didn't have any time to focus on those. So I don't have any idea what's going on in the app ecosystem. Um, I think it's, it's going on pretty well and we have most of the important core applications. Mm -hmm. at least included in the meta package yeah but uh, as soon as uh, we get better with the base platform i i wish to get more involved with the other apps as well yeah so yeah um, about the gnome desktop session so in order to run a gnome desktop session to have the it displayed you to have the the panel on top and all the like uh, window management functions you are accustomed to. There are a couple of, uh, a number of uh, base components, which is, uh, well, the aptly named GNOME session, uh, the GNOME shell, which takes care of the UI and so on. And uh, another important part is the GNOME settings daemon, which actually spawns a lot of uh, auxiliary daemons, like taking care of uh, keyboard shortcuts, media keys, uh, screen color, uh, and many, many other uh, helper things. Uh, starting with uh, yeah, GDM, uh, without uh, knowing the normal architecture, I thought that GDM would be a really simple uh, thing to port and to package. But uh, soon I discovered the uh, circular dependency, which is uh, a bit interesting in, uh, in GNOME. So um, GDM itself, in order to display the login screen and to greet the user with a, a login screen with the user and password, uh, it needs the GNOME shell package to display the UI, which includes calendar and uh, another buttons around. But <laughs> if you want to uh, run GNOME shell before porting GDM, well, you actually cannot in order to build it. Uh, you need to have uh, GDM installed. And GNOME Shell depends on uh, GDM for deciding when to display, or I don't know exactly, but uh, it relies on it for displaying the, the locking screen whenever uh, there is a period of uh, inactivity of the user. And yeah, what happened in the end because of this, uh, I decided to split the GDM package in uh, two parts. So one is the uh, libgdm, which includes only the library required by GNOME shell uh, to communicate with the lock screen, and uh, the actual uh, display manager, the gdm package, is uh, packaged separately as a work-in-progress package because I was still having issue with it. I could not restart the, the login screen after uh, logging out from a user session. Right now we're just like spawning um... Going from either the normal X, XDM display manager or just running start X with the GNOME session in the X in RC file. Yeah, I would say start X or XDM is the recommended way for now. Um, yeah, also one thing uh, important to note uh, while packaging uh, GNOME, porting GNOME, uh, while we have two separate packages for GNOME shell and motor, they probably could be one thing, uh, because um, Motor is um, responsible for window management and compositing, but uh, it's actually loaded uh, dynamically as a library by GNOME Shell. And usually whenever the API is updated for Motor, you have to, there is a new GNOME Shell version as well. So these packages cannot be updated independently from each other. They have to follow the, the same version. Yeah, most of the, especially newer GNOME packages, use uh, the Maison build system. So it was nice thing to learn. 
<laughs> Maybe not everyone uh, likes it, but I feel we have uh, good support for Mason in uh, package source. And here below, I have an example of how a typical configuration of uh, Mason would look like in a, in a package. I wouldn't go in detail in the package info package source because there is, I think, too much to talk and <laughs> that would deserve a, a different <laughs> slide or a lesson. Yeah, um, I think we have in it BSD, but we don't really have uh, so much in our operating system or... Yeah, um, so the story with PAX is that it was originally a patch for the Linux kernel and then it just kind of lay dormant for years and was never accepted upstream, but we've integrated um, some of the PAX security features into NetBSD, including mProtect. And it just, um, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it stops memory that was ever writable from becoming executable unless it's declared beforehand that it, it's allowed to become executable later. And um, I spent some time modifying um, Spider Monkey, which is the Mozilla JavaScript engine to support this, because GNOME Shell was um, loading Spider Monkey dynamically, and we didn't want to disable this kind of important security feature while running GNOME because uh, it, it's quite a killer feature that NetBSD has, in my opinion. And uh, as far as I know, mProtect is enabled by default in the new NetBSD install. Yeah. So if we wouldn't patch uh, SpiderMonkey or other um, just-in-time compiler to to be aware of mProtect and to assign the memory properly or declare the mappings, then yeah, they would just fail to execute in the default install. You would have to disable the, the memory protection otherwise. Yep. And yeah, going on into the pain points, which was actually one of the most difficult parts of the port. Uh, one of them is the dependency, the very hard dependency on the login D. Uh, well, while uh, GNOME used to support uh, other things for seat management, uh, like console kit, it has been removed at least a couple of years ago. So most of the OpenBSD patches that we imported was actually for reintroducing console kit uh, support. And yeah, those patches are in the package source tree. It's a bit uh, difficult to upstream them because uh, we don't have a like large user base that asks for console kit. And uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm perspectives of getting console kit again into, into GNOME? Well, it was quite a weird discussion because on the mailing lists, they, they said, okay, we're going to remove console kit support. Is anyone using this? And people replied saying, yes, we're using this. And then they went ahead and removed it anyway. So, yeah. So uh, at least officially they support anything that is uh, implementing the login the API, uh, which uh, we don't have in package source. We currently don't have any package to, to uh, implement that API, but we do have uh, a console kit fork called uh, console kit two, and the uh, patches uh, we have for console kit work with uh, this fork. Uh, there are some things in development that we might consider for login D support or something that might replace login D. Uh, there is a package developed by uh, David McKay called Initware. It's a fork of systemd, but as uh, I had discussion with uh, David, he had some trouble uh, porting the seed management part of uh, LoginD. It had uh, a lot of Linux specific uh, things. Another thing that is uh, portable um, is a package called, or two packages called uh, seedd and libseed by Kenny Levison. I think uh, he's one of the Sway, Wayland Compositor, guys. And uh, the purpose of this library is to be portable. And yeah, as, um, I cannot say much about it, but uh, a portable library that can work on multiple operating systems has maybe more chance to be accepted into, into GNOME. Yeah, so this is very much uh, also a cry for help. So if anyone can contribute to this part of uh, <laughs> the, the ports or the ecosystem, it would be hugely helpful for, for us. Um, 
one interesting thing that I discovered uh, in, uh, let's say, POSIX programming or UNIX programming. I come from a web dev background, especially things like PHP, Python, and locales was never, or localization was never a problem for me. But I discovered that, uh, yeah, on the operating system level, at least in UNIX, uh, uh, locale was usually set per process. And there is a possibility to set uh, locales per thread, but uh, everyone I talk to about uh, the functions that implement uh, this functionality, use locale and set locale, they are considered as not great implementation or not great ideas. They are more a stopgap solution, but there was never uh, a proper solution, uh, I mean, standardized. Um, yeah, we had this problem because use locale specifically is used by GNOME to set up uh, the locale of uh, the current thread in, uh, in parts of the ecosystem that use localization, but we don't have use locale implemented in uh, NetBSD, and probably there's no chance there will ever be, I guess. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what the future holds, really. But the preferred replacements are the functions that just set the locale temporarily for that specific call. And um, that's what um, that's what Dan's patched the GNOME packages to use, and the patches have been set so bent up, upstream, right? Well, uh, the path, I think my package upstream, I'll share the link uh, later. Uh, it's about supporting print underscore L functions on NetBSD. Uh, problem is it's only supported on NetBSD and I don't know, the correct way is to maybe convince our operating system to implement them as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing does that's incomplete in NetBSD, we, even if we have a print underscore L, which basically allows us to set the locale at function call, we don't have to set it per thread. Uh, is that when we want to use get text for localization for translated messages, there is no equivalent. So a uh, thing that would be nice that we do, do in NetBSD if we also implemented get text underscore L family of functions. Yep, that's it about locales. Yeah, um, many probably would be curious about Wayland and uh, what's going on. So unfortunately, at the current moment, we cannot run a Wayland session with GNOME, mostly because, uh, yeah, porting Wayland is difficult and uh, many, most of the Wayland stuff uh, depends on the Linux kernel APIs. Maybe, Nia, yeah, you want to tell more about this in detail? Or... Yeah, I, I spent some time a couple of years ago porting some simpler compositors and those are, those are usable right now, actually, but, um, <clears throat> Uh, specifically, porting the parts of GNOME that um, support Wayland is not something that I, I've gotten around to, and it's not something I, I'm sure I have time for at the moment. Yep. I quickly check the messages. Okay. So we're almost at the end. But it's a nice screenshot. <laughs> I couldn't make a demo. <laughs> it was not possible on my hardware uh, for GNOME, but uh, this is a GNOME 40 or 40, yeah, 40.1 or 40.2 GNOME shell session. This is how it looks in NBC. This is a standard uh, GNOME installation uh, with yeah, as minimal modification as uh, needed to run it on uh, NetBSD. It works and it's uh, quite smooth on uh, supported hardware. Of course, uh, 3D accelerated uh, graphics cards is uh, required. Yeah, we're gonna um, hopefully have an update to the graphics stack very soon, so uh, many more newer GPUs will be supported. That's um, becoming quite stable. Yeah, uh, instructions to install uh, the GNOME desktop uh, there are on the wiki. We have some uh, a bit outdated uh, Package source packaging docs. I'm trying to keep them up to date for GNOME. It's a lot of work though. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I feel they are quite good already. So if you want to give it a try, just go to the wiki and try installing. Um, we, I mentioned a bit about uh, Wayland and GNOME upstream. 
Okay, it's, I found in my communications when I try to upstream, well, that people are usually uh, receptive or they're welcoming patches, but a big obstacle in having a NetBSD support is that there's no uh, continuous integration pipelines, neither uh, free desktop for the Wayland uh, people have it, nor the GNOME. So uh, if we have some tests that are supposed to check uh, for NetBSD support, um, basically, there's no automated way to run them in their infrastructure. And well, while it's not a super difficult uh, project, it still needs some time to to implement uh, the CI for NetBSD. And it's possible if uh, we could get any kind of uh, people or support to getting this project, that, uh, that would go a long way into improving the ports. Yeah. So I have enjoyed working on the GNOME port a lot, and that's hugely thanks to Maya, who initially uh, posted the bounty on the mailing lists. Nia helped me a lot uh, working on GNOME packages, and uh, Thomas also for sponsoring me because during this project I also became a NetBSD developer, and that's a uh, Really great achievement for me, and I'm uh, I'm really happy. And uh, that's about all. <laughs> if there are any questions, please. So thank you, Dan. Uh, are there any questions? You can write them on the on the chat. Yes, I see a question. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Luna, also for joining the the talk. Uh, Luna has a question about uh, porting uh, version 41 of GNOME uh, that's supposed to be released on Wednesday, as I see. And uh, yes, uh, I hope I can find the time, but uh, getting the next version is uh, straightforward. Uh, I think I already tried something in the WIP part of package source, in the working progress packages. So, so definitely there is uh, there's no big obstacle in getting uh, version 41 of GNOME. Should be there soon. It shouldn't be that that different from forty, should it? Yeah, it is not different. So the GNOME forty was not very different from GNOME three in terms of packaging. So GNOME forty one is even a less difference. Okay, thank you very much for your answers. Any other questions, please? If not, thank you very much, Dan, for your presentation. Very nice, nice one. I propose to adjourn here. The chat will remain open. If there will come any new questions, you can respond there. Of course, we can find us as well on the IRC channels, on the mailing lists. Uh, thank you guys again for having us. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you again. Bye bye. Bye. Oh, there is a question from uh, Thomas, I think, yeah? Yeah. Wiz, uh, do we know people at uh, Free Desktop or GNOME that know how to add NetBZ to CI? Uh, well, we were talking about like adding it using, this, using the source hook CI, but that wasn't yeah. possible for some reason. So the thing is, they use uh, GitLab CI. That's a uh, um, software I'm, I'm uh, familiar with. I, use that work. I have at least the basic knowledge how to do this, but I didn't work on uh, like NetBSD pipelines, especially work with uh, virtual machines. So it would take me quite some time, like uh, I guess a week or two to work on it. Um, and yes, there was a source hat proposal to the guys from SourceHat offer a NetBSD runner, but there was a problem connecting GitLab CI to, to the SourceHat uh, runners. Yeah. So if I find the time, I would love to work on the GitLab CI thing uh, for GNOME and uh, Free Desktop, but I don't know when this is going to happen. And if someone has the opportunity or needs any help, 
I'm happy to provide. We might be able to find some FBSD Foundation funding for it. That's good. Any other questions? Okay, then. Then thank you again for your answers. So we can remain here around if there will be, they can write on the chat. So thank you again then for the presentation. Thank Have you. Have a nice day. You too. Enjoy.